All right, welcome to the regular scheduled school board meeting of Cheyenne Bad Mountain District 12. It's March 20th at 5.30 p.m. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have anybody signed to speak up? We do have two visitors that would like to speak tonight. That sounds good. Let me. Uh... So the first one can uh, come out of the seat at the table and let me read our... And it's Aaron Gibb is the first one speaker. Excellent. Let me read my... Uh, the, the protocol. So the board welcomes the comments of our Cheyenne Mountain School District 12 community members to include residents of the district, parents or legal guardians of students currently enrolled in the district, current and former students of the district, current district employees, and individuals invited by the board or superintendent to address the board on a designated topic. To ensure that the board can accomplish their work already on the agenda, the board will be limiting each speaker to three minutes. We greatly value all comments from the public and to be clear this public comment is time for the board to listen to the community. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, my name is Erin Gibbs. Um, my husband and I are district, uh, a district family of three children. Our son Patrick is a senior at Shine Mountain High School. Um, and we are local business owners, local taxpayers, and big supporters of our community. Um, I'm here tonight with thanks for your time and your ability to listen. Uh, I'm here to advocate for my son, Patrick. He is a part-time student at Shine Mountain High School. Uh, due to COVID and extenuated circumstances with his educational path, it hasn't been a direct line to graduation. We're very excited that it's around the corner. My request, uh, our family's request, is that Patrick be extended uh, a special accommodation to walk with the senior class, sit with the senior class for the graduation ceremonies. He is not earning a diploma from Cheyenne Mountain High School. It's actually coming from a, a separate institution, accredited high school, and because of a misalignment of credits and his uh, unique situation, he ended up uh, doing doing a Split education, hybrid situation with virtual and in-person learning. It was an amazing journey. Here we are at the end. Uh, he's accepted to business school starting in the fall. And one of the key things they said that made Patrick stand out is this really unusual and amazing um, ability to navigate two worlds of education. And isn't that what we want out of our uh, future leaders? Patrick is I'm biased. Patrick's a pretty amazing, humble kid. Um, he asks for nothing, but he is asking to sit with his peers. At Shine Mountain, he has been a leader, a student leader. He's been a huge advocate for all the kids, uh, attends every spirit assembly and sports event. He earned a state championship for the varsity tennis team this year. He's been given an academic letter. He's been really recognized by the student community as, as a, a great kid, and I think somebody that this board, this district, should be very, very proud of. Um, before I let Patrick advocate for himself and tell you a little bit about his story, um, I just wanted to read something that someone posted today um, about this situation. We put together a, a petition to see what we could do to rally support on behalf of Patrick. I know this is a an un, what I've been told an unprecedented request. The answer is that COVID and the reason that we're sitting here in this situation is also unprecedented. And that's why I'm asking for an accommodation, not necessarily anything other than that. It's not a rule change, a policy change, a break in policy. I don't think there's a policy that ever has addressed something like this. Um, but I do know that kids have walked through the graduation ceremony who have not earned a diploma. Uh, an example would be 
foreign exchange students set my timer. Mm -hmm. yes. um, anyway, there is uh, there is precedent for unusual circumstances. And what I was going to read is somebody posting about actually a deceased student who was given an accommodation to have their name read and have attention. Uh, so why not let somebody who is here present enjoy that special experience and go forward into life after a really tough three years of um, COVID. So thank you for the time. Next, we have Patrick Gibb. Thank you, Mark. Um, greetings, all, and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. My name is Patrick Gibbs. I'm a Shine Mountain High School student. I have a 4.2 GPA. I want to thank everybody for coming here to support me and hearing my story on why I should participate in the graduation with the senior class in 2023 and why that's so important for me. I'm not asking for a diploma. I just want a chance to sit with my peers. I'll start at the beginning. I was a full-time D12 student. I uh, started in third grade at Broadmoor Elementary when we moved in Pueblo, from Pueblo in 2013. And fast forward to March 2020, about three years ago, our district school was closed. At the time, my brother and sister attended an accredited high school that offered both in-person and virtual learning. My parents were worried that I would fall behind without finishing my freshman year. And without knowing the future, Without, without knowing what the future would hold, I transferred to SCORE Academy in a virtual capacity for the end of sophomore year. I re-enrolled at CMHS as a part-time student in the fall of 2021, as my family continued to navigate COVID in the best way for me to achieve graduation with my peers and respect my learning style. I am proud to have received many CMHS accolades and demonstrate my role as an ambassador for the school and community. I received an academic letter for exemplary grades and schoolwork in the most rigorous classes. I received my award in, in all school assembly as a CMHS student. I've completed four years on the CMHS tennis team, including the only tennis varsity state championship last fall with my partner, Cameron Ford. We were featured on television news, front page of the Gazette, and in local magazines. We were celebrated on the campus, on campus and in school assemblies. I've attended every sporting event our school has to offer and do not want any student to feel invisible. So I often felt, as I often felt during COVID, everyone needs to be cheered for. I tried to re-enroll at CMHS, but the curriculums in the two schools do not align and would have required repeated work. So I maintained a split schedule with great effort and self-determination along with my dedication to CMHS community so I wouldn't lose friends and teammates as my academic path was different than my friends. In December, I was awarded admission to the University of Miami Business School with a scholarship because of my rigorous schedules. I maintained her <laughs> schedules I maintained at CMHS and score over the last three and a half years, or three plus years. They made it known that I stood out for my navigation in both virtual and in-person environment and gave CMHS great athletes for my education. I never wanted to leave CMHS. I never wanted COVID. I never wanted to adapt the unfortunate reality if, that I wasn't able to return full-time school with my peers. But I pressed on knowing the end game was the same, graduation and college. Despite my hard work and determination, I find myself in a situation of not being able to celebrate my hard work with my peers and fellow graduates. I'm a student and a human being uh, who cares about CMHS, should be so proud to celebrate. I respect myself and my peers. I respect my policies. I respect the policies, procedures, and rules, and don't blame our principal or anyone for the decision not to let me walk out of graduation. And I'll finish up with this. That said, I have not found any rules prohibiting my participation at graduation at the graduation ceremony. There are rules for earning a diploma, rules for part-time students, but nothing that says part-time students cannot walk with peers for graduation ceremonies. Thank you for your time. There's no other visitors. Thanks, Adam, on the agenda board members, superintendent correspondence and comments. Let's know for, um, for people who have not been to board meetings before, that's the end of public comments. And now we get on with the regular meeting that we have. And you are, of course, welcome to stay. And we also understand that this isn't like super exciting for most people. <laughs> we love it. That's why we do this. But we don't feel bad if you need to get up and leave and go do your homework or whatever it is, just to 
I'm just going to give a DAC update, but I think in the last work session we did a thorough job of that when the high school happened. So you know, consider the only thing on the agenda if you'll have necessary. Okay. Um, I just want to note that the symphonic band at the high school is traveling to New York during school break and will be performing in Carnegie Hall. And I will report back on that performance when we return. Excellent. Randall, do you have anything? I do not. Thank you for including me today. I do have a couple of uh, comments. Uh, speech and debate, Jimmy Hayward and Colin Rowe, state champs and public forum debate team. High school overall was fourth place in debate. And inquired competed um, in regions and heading to state soon. So they're doing all of their regular competitions and, of course, preparing for uh, some pretty fantastic travel to. Uh, to New York City, Big Apple. Uh, academic scholarship winners will be announced soon. So just uh, foreshadowing, and I do believe that on our calendar, when we get to that point of the agenda, we did add the um, academic honors. So thank you, Ms. Mello, for bringing that to light. Science Olympiad, um, Southern Regionals, uh, second, first in flight, Finn Brownie and Megan Stengel. And very own Harry Bellows Chem Lab team, I believe, took third place, if I have the information correct. State uh, competition on April 1st. Uh, Knowledge Quiz Bowl, 15th out of 40 plus teams. The Rocky Mountain Quiz Kids will air on Fox 21 News. Uh, either Ms. Brenner or I will try to give a shout out when we know that's going to happen. Our uh, robotics. Um, so we don't technically have a robotics team, but we join with Manitou Springs currently, and uh, that seems to be growing in interest. They're going to a competition in Denver uh, this Friday and all day Saturday. Friday starts in the afternoon. So if you'd like more details and have nothing else that you have on your dance card, I'd like to check out some robotics action. Um, and that might be something that we're looking at into the future as well about robotics for the, for the high school. This spring, we've had uh, 390 um, spring sport athletes, and according to Mr. Roberts, that's pretty close to typical, around 400 or so. So it's been pretty busy if you're out uh, after school most days, rain or shine. It's nice to have more daylight hours, that's for sure. Boys and girls track and field, baseball, boys and girls lacrosse, girls soccer, girls golf, boys swimming, girls tennis, boys volleyball. There's something going on just about every night right now. Baseball, four and one. They're first in the state right now. Boys lacrosse also ranked first in the state. Girls lacrosse has had a really strong start as well. And girls soccer, um, another great start. Uh, they did have a season opener loss to number two, 5A team. But I think that's what happens when you're playing 5A teams. Still pretty solid. Uh, Dr. Aldridge informed me that testing, um, or as a reminder, testing starts tomorrow, grades three through six, English language arts and mathematics, ends April 7th. Obviously, we have spring break coming up. CMAS science for fifth grade is April 11, 12, 13. CMAS science for 10th grade, April 4. CMAS science eighth grade, April 14. SAT at the high school, April 12. PSAT for ninth and 10th graders, April 13, 14. So there's a bunch of stuff on the calendar with all that. Uh, Shemont Junior High had their sixth grade orientation night so last week with Open House. And I understand from this Johnson will be a new format. So they kind of went around the classrooms and then they ended up in the gym and had kind of tables where they could go around and engage. This I didn't go. Okay. Thanks. 
it sounds like it would be a better format than what I've experienced. So, Natalie, you were there, right? And Greg? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have nothing to compare it to, but I think it was a really um, positive experience. I thought the kids knew it. Did you walk out of there going, holy cow, what are we getting into? They walked out going, do I have to share a locker? What, what's up with that, that locker? Do I have to dress in front of people? Do I have to? So she had a million questions. Luckily, right. she had seven great friends, but she was immediately asking questions. She enjoyed it. She thought it was great. And the Millers? Yeah, I think we enjoyed it. I think, I think the only part might be the, the people touring didn't really know where they were going. I think so maybe a couple of kids. That are there just to kind of guide the area because we became the tour guide for like a very large group. Yeah, so like the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think we should have a Well, there's still the counseling sign outside of the registrar's office. Oh, yeah. true. I had looked out yeah. there and I was like, that's yeah. not where you yeah. meant. That's yeah. not right. <laughs> no, you're right. going to have to change that. They did so, point yeah. out though in the presentation. So. Yep, they did their best. I think to just kind of navigate yeah. people, but I think having that that tour ahead was the only part that they were just like, okay, let's walk. But, yeah. Well, did Nick manage to retire the video presentations? That's probably best for everyone. I said that made it a long night in the past. With maybe not as much information as you would hope. So the one-on-one -on -one conversations probably did a better job. I think they were just as overwhelmed as kids in a new place. It was well, new setup too. It's yeah, right. I mean, it's just the way it yep. is. Yeah, we got to the point of okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> right. Saturation. Yeah. Well, I think they still get to all the sixth graders go and do a tour, so they'll still get their chance and they start practicing their lockers. Yeah. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, overall, I heard positives, but I don't I don't have a whole lot of comparative data other other than the trade to go from the cafeteria area to the gym seemed to be a pretty favorable move. So, oh yeah. So we'll see how that rolls in the future. The last thing I wanted to share was just around um, well, two things. One, our leaders have been going through a training like, uh, called True Speak training with administrators. Uh, Dr. Aldridge and Mr. Paul have been helping me out with. With that, so we are training about two thirds of our leaders this spring and another third this fall. It's really a protocol around communication, so we're working with people. Um, if you'd like to know more, I'm happy to share with you offline about that. But uh, kind of excited about that, just to introduce a, a model for our communicating with each other. And then the last thing, just as a highlight, uh, DAC, speaking of DAC, parent survey results. So, so it closed last week. And currently um, in the process of redacting uh, comments. So just a big kudos to Mr. Miller for just all the work of getting it prepared. We're using a new tool, and that's been really exciting. Um, principals have received the raw data on also with the comments unedited or unredacted. Uh, and I just completed today a redaction process, really just removing individual names. Um, comments with that are redacted with results will be shared with the DAC subcommittee. And then the DAC will be subcommittee and the DAC will have purview to put together a presentation for you all on our April board meeting. So not the work session, but board meeting will have that. Uh, and then we'll get we'll get the calendar here a little bit later on in the agenda. But uh, I think that's it for now. I have one more note. Um, just thinking about what you said about all of our students in sports. I don't think that we've met as a group since the hockey team won. The oh, you're team. right. Yeah. Wow, right. The hockey team. Yes. In triple overtime. Oh my triple gosh. Overtime. So it was triple gosh. overtime. I shared with people. I it did happen to go to the game, and uh, honestly, it's one of the best games at any level of any sport I've ever watched. Wow. Probably in my life. Wow. I just. The all I can say is that the grit and determination was unprecedented in terms of the team. And quite honestly, um, the other team, by all accounts, seemed to be outperforming it, at least through the lion's share of the regular uh, game before we got to overtime. But our kids just kept like defenders and, and those on offense would hustle back and even like throw their bodies in front of the puck, literally on a goalie play, 
probably one of the best games he's ever played. I don't know much about his background, but just a really incredible experience. And uh, the great determination was pretty remarkable. So yeah, hats off to them. In triple overtime. And uh, did you say it was so zero zero until then? Or? Correct. The final score was one zero. Yeah. And I just I, I feel it wasn't a I felt so bad for the other team too. Yes. It's just like both teams like do we tie? Both have a championship, you know, because just the exhaustion too, and by the end, as you can imagine, the speed and pace of the game was significantly slower by that time, right? Because it all the kids are just exhausted. Yeah. Uh, but it was a it was a valiant effort of just grit and determination and not to give up, which was really just remarkable. The other team, honestly, bigger, faster, appeared to be stronger. Yeah, yeah they just didn't stop. It's a good team. Yeah. 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 Great yeah. determination. That's great determination. That's what we need so, yeah. our kids. Yeah. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, approval of consent agenda. Can I have a motion, please? I move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. All right, new business action regarding a new mascot for Cheyenne Mountain Junior High School. Would you like to the uh, explanation? Yeah, maybe that's the best one for the record. All right, so uh, we've got an official recommendation from Cheyenne Mountain Junior High Principal Johnson to retire the Cheyenne Mountain Junior High mascot, Thunderbirds, including the removal of all physical and digital image imagery at the end of the 2022-23 school year, and to adopt the Mountain Lions or Lions as the new Cheyenne Mountain Junior High mascot and the team name beginning the 2023-24 school year. This recommendation is the culmination of thoughtful work from the Cheyenne Mountain Junior High Student Council since the start of the 2022-23 school year with feedback from Cheyenne Mountain Junior High students, staff, parents, including feedback from our current sixth grade students and parents from across the district. Moreover, with the approval of this recommendation, the district will come into compliance with Colorado Senate Bill 21116 concerning the prohibition of American Indian mascots in Colorado prior to the deadline of June 16, 2023. I would like to make this motion if that's okay. Yeah, I have one quick question. Yep. So is it actually mountain lions or lions? Mountain lions will be the full mascot, but they're going to be known in the vernacular as lions, analogous to red tail hawks, known in the vernacular as hawks. Or historically, currently, thunderbirds, known often as T birds. So, any imagery related, related around that, it's going to look like a mountain lion and not an African lion? That is correct. Okay. All right, can I have a motion, please? Yes, I move that the Board of Education retire the current CMJH mascot, Thunderbirds, or T-Birds, including the removal of all physical and digital imagery at the end of the 2022-23 school year, and adopt the Mountain Lions, Lions as the new Cheyenne Mountain Junior High mascot and team name beginning the 2023-24 school year. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right, next item for business 2023. Before we move on from this, can I just say that I just heard a, a really interesting um, little story on the radio about a school that was retiring their Thunderbird mascot. And I was like, oh, we on the news again. <laughs> and it was somebody out in um in the on the western slope. Yeah. yeah. And they decided Austria. to adopt the Mountaineers. Yep. Yeah. Which I thought was so interesting that so many of us have had similar, um, I guess because of our shared history here in Colorado, like similar ideas about things that we Thank you. Thank you. Unless folks are watching tonight, Ms. Johnson and I believe that student council are working up on the reveal in the next day or two. So if you don't broadcast it, we'll know for that fun to happen. And then, of course, Ms. I should have shared also that Ms. Johnson will send out a communication episode to the full community as well I, um, and that will go out for the next day or two as well, just so everybody knows, in case they're not tuning in tonight for the morning. 
Well, I'm pretty sure sixty percent of the community is watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all two, all two are going away. <laughs> all two of them. <laughs> you know, one's rusty and one's <laughs> Congratulations, Lisa Johnson, and I have not said a word to any of the good that I know. Kept it under wraps. All right, next step, 23-24, employee group health insurance renewal. can't believe they didn't stay for this. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Let's see the not so fun news. <laughs> How much is the old premium going up? Right, so I kind of saw a little packet. The premium, unfortunately, we had a medical loss ratio of 106%. And as you know, typically we like to see that around 80%. So the renewal would have come in at 28 to 37% increase, but because Kaiser had a cap increase, it, it capped it at 15%. So we definitely met the cap. And then with the state mandate of a new uh, uh, state mandated fertility co coverage, that's a 0.59. So the total increase is 15.59% for next year. So the one thing that Kaiser is offering to do, and that's about the uh, one, two, about the fourth bullet down on the first sheet, they're offering a one-time $280,000 credit, which is pretty much like a premium holiday for one month. But you have to be very careful in understanding that that's not built into the renewal, right? The renewal is what it is, the 15.59%. And that's what they're gonna build that on next year when they decide what our renewal will be next year. The 280,000 is really nice and we'll take it. We'll take the credit for sure, that will help. But it's going to already kind of put us behind 280000 next year as a budget purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful about how we allocate that 280 and what we do with that. Because, like I said, next year they're going to build their whatever renewal on the, what the premium is before that 280000 Does that make sense? How long has the district been using Kaiser? It was about three years ago. It was a good question. We had Kaiser, we left Kaiser, and then we came back to Kaiser. And I think it's now been. Three or four years, I think you're right, Nessa. Yeah. There was four or five before that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure was. But there was a choice to leave Kaiser last year, right? So for the last when we first moved to Kaiser, all the employees were asked, carry your choices. And last year there was a survey also, right? Yeah, we did the survey last year. Yeah. So and you know, the middle box on this first sheet, um, when I did find out it was an increase by so much, I did ask about bidding it going out to other vendors to see what they would say. Um, Aetna, Cigna, um, Anthem, they all declined to quote because of the, they couldn't be competitive with what Kaiser, with the 15% that Kaiser was giving us. And UHC released a 30% increase was what they would have offered. So we we did try to go out and see if we could get a better price, um, but Kaiser's gonna be the best price that we have. So the, the second page just kind of shows the breakdown between the, the plans. The first box is the current rates that we have, and we have two different plans. So we have a select plan, which is the cheaper uh, plan because the narrow, narrow uh, network of doctors, and the plus plan is the more expensive plan because it's a wide network of doctors. So you'll see what the current rates are, and currently down in the blue box, we, we pay total about 2.8 million a year in benefits total, employee and employer portion. So the renewal came in at 3.3 million, you'll see that in the blue box down there, which is a 15.59% or an increase of 449,000 for next year. The next box shows the annual difference with that $280,000 credit, and that number is kind of hard to read, but it's three million fifty-four thousand eight ninety-two, which technically is about a five point eight eight percent increase from this year to next. But that's because of just the one time two hundred eighty thousand dollar credit. So total for next year, we're going to increase by one hundred sixty-nine thousand seven fifty-two because of the two hundred eighty dollars um, premium credit that we'll get. And if you're curious as to how many people are on the plans, in the middle of that box, it talks about the enrollment. So you'll see how many people are on each of the different plans. If you're curious, so we have about 268 employees that take the benefits. If you add the 164 and the 122 together. And Ms. Moran, that's about two-thirds, 65%? 65%. 65%. It's about that those that qualify for benefits. It's about two-thirds take our benefits. Correct. Qualifying. Yes. 
Any questions on that page? So the next one is the scenario that I put together. I ran many different scenarios to see what it would look like if we shared it 50 50, if we took the whole cost, if there's different ways to look at it. And then Dr. Peek and I were thinking, well, one of our goals would be to keep the lowest tier, that, that single lowest tier, under $100. Recur recruiting purposes, things like that. If we have one plan that's under $100, that would be a goal of ours. So that's that single on the select plan. In addition to that, we're thinking, well, what do we want to pay as a district? What, what's our portion of this bill going to be? So we were trying to run a scenario of the district portion being around $100,000, and we keep that lowest uh, single tier under $100. So the first section, the green one, is our select plan. So that's the lowest plan. And it shows you currently what the employee pays on each plan and what a potential renewal would be for them. And you'll see that ranges from $63 up to $87, depending on which plan they're on. And if you multiply that out by 12, that will tell you what their annual increase would be. Now, if you factor in the premium holiday, the last column there is actually what they would pay as an increase for the entire year, because they would get one month free. And we, we would pick that month in November, right before the holidays, one month, that's when the, the premium would come. So if you factor in the premium credit, that last column is actually what they would pay for an entire year. Now they're going to build the increase each month and then get that credit. But that's the only way we can build the next year on whatever the premium is going to be. So then the last section of that is what our current contribution is per plan and what our proposed would be and what our increase would be monthly per plan. Per plan. Same thing down there at the bottom. Um, same information, just with the plus plan. And you can see the difference there. We're not trying to hold harmless the single on that plan. We just wanted to make sure the single on the first plan was at least under $100. So all in all, if we go with this scenario, the district would cover about $116,694 of the cost, which is about 69% of the total increase. And the remaining 53,000 would be passed on to the employees, which would be about 31% of the total cost is passed on to the employees under this under this scenario. Of the increase or the cost? Of the total increase. Okay. So if you figure out the total increase of what the premium will be, for, we're going to cover 69% of employees are going to be responsible. So you know, it'll vary by employee based on which plan they're on. Now, no one is going to increase by 31%, you'll correct, but, but just the overall cost. And then just a reminder, you know, we often hear about when we put money towards the benefits, the employees that don't take the benefits feel like maybe they kind of miss out on that money. I do want to remind you that um, all of our employees who don't take the health insurance have the option of taking family, dental, vision, and the athletic benefits for free. And it fits within the portion of what we allocate to them. So they do get some benefits when they don't take the health insurance. Makes sense. So this is one scenario that we're that we would like to bring forward for this increase. We'd like to kind of open up any discussion or questions you might have regarding this because we'll need to get this all rolling here pretty soon for open enrollment and getting paperwork in from police. Um, I have two final questions. Great. So why are they giving us this credit? It seems <laughs> sneaky. It does seem sneaky, doesn't it? Um, I think it's the it's Kaiser. And Kaiser always has its way of wanting to keep you keep you in. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're not gonna build it in the premium, as you can tell, because they right. want to protect themselves. Right. Okay. So I think they know they can do it financially, but they don't want to build it in the premium because that would hurt them next year if we have another bad year. Right. Okay, that's in it. Um, my first my next question. So when we were, I'm just trying to do the math here. Getting slimy. Yeah. When we visited schools. We heard some complaints from teachers about the price of insurance going up and how even with what I considered a pretty significant raise that I wasn't even very comfortable with, I like wanted to do as much as we could, that they are not, that they're taking home less money. I don't see how that's possible. So last year, they didn't have an increase to health insurance. Yeah, the whole, yeah I know. Last year. So how come they're saying that that they're taking home less money with our. It could be something about raise. their personal 
deductions or that you just cost of living in they're, Colorado. They're, right, the mayor specifically saying it was related to, whoa, you're going up so high in health insurance. And I was like, well, it just didn't make sense to they me. They may so. have changed their plan. So okay. they, they, they or they went. may just be thinking about previous years on how that it would could happen. Be previous years, <laughs> but it is, it is, you are correct. We, you all approved last year for us to cover 100% of the increase with benefits well, last year. In addition to a raise. Yes. In addition to a raise. Right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I was not misunderstanding how we do this. this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So this is, but this is the cap of Kaiser plus the, the component of the- The state mandate is for, for WJ. Right. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. so we're percent. talking about just over a 15 and a half percent, 15 and a half percent increase. And right. part of that is just the function we just have some high use claims that have happened to hit us. Mm -hmm. That can be cyclical. Most organizations that will come up and come right. back down. We just happen to be kind of on an uptick right now. And so that's hitting us a little bit harder. Thankfully, Kaiser does have a cap. And there's, I don't think there's a perfect company out there, but they have a cap. And that, as evidenced by Natalie's in inquiry into what's out in the marketplace, it wasn't really anything that was going to come close to staying with them. This would still be a model of us covering 7% of the increase, but uh, by not covering 100% of the increase, that also frees up a few more dollars for us to try to still prioritize being competitive with salaries. Because that's going to be around the corner conversation in the next few times that we're together. We start having some of that conversation, obviously, and it uh, it's that really reminds me, dude. So it's a lot of money. So you know, so if you pull from here, that's a little less for over here. So it's this, yeah. it's this, it's this, you know, trying to to split a thin line, be as aggressive, obviously, as we can, and still be fiscally free. Um, I do think it's important for us to have uh, an initial basic option that's under hundred dollars a month. Uh, because we are also attracting some brand new teachers into the profession. Um, while still many of them come to us with experience, we're starting to note more and more that we're getting folks that are brand new to the profession. And just oftentimes that's associated with folks who uh, are going to be relying on a very entry level compensation. So if we can have at least a single option, it's oftentimes also a younger person who may not have as many significant uh, demands for unique uh, positions or coverages and that type of thing. Um, so I think that will help us from a competitive standpoint with um, newer teachers that may want to pursue coming to work here. I particularly like that feature of how you guys have planned this out. I think that the cost of health insurance is, is something that we all struggle with, whether we are working for a school, school district or a private employer. Um, but I think that um, the optics of keeping it under 100 for um, especially those new teachers to try to attract them, I think is really important. So thank you for having that feature. So we, we I mean, there is there is a, a recommended motion if you feel comfortable and feel as though you have enough information, uh, because part of obviously benefits come before compensation because Natalie and her team will have to start moving in the direction to get. Um, open enrollment information that's ready to go. Uh, if, if you need additional time, then we would probably add to a special meeting at the people work session, because that'd be the next time for. I'm fine to learn now. But if you are feeling comfortable, or Mr. Casey, you can always do, or but. Randy, how are you? Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Well, I was just curious from a process standpoint, I uh, recall in the past, we, we polled the, uh, the faculty and so forth. And I wondered whether that's a appropriate here as we're looking toward a, a pretty big hit next year. Think pulling them on the different vendors or pulling them on the rates? Well, just the packages, including the $100 a month version that you spoke of. I just, as much as anything, it's, it's educational to them who may not be thinking about this. It also addresses the comment Monica made, which we all heard, uh, that people say they're not keeping up. To change our decision. I mean, I don't know that we're in a position to make a dramatic shift in decision. 
depending, depending on those percent. right depending on those results i mean we can put out there like i think natalie does a really good job of summarizing the information the opportunities but also could include that there was not another plan that could quote anything nearly as competitive um, because this is the cheapest option wasn't the case last year which is why there was an opportunity to vote so i just can't imagine a scenario where we'd get back information it would tell us a, it would impact the de decision that we have today so the increase would be what 30 percent is that right here yeah. otherwise uh, I mean, the yeah, yeah. So double, yes, double. Something other than Pfizer was double the increase. Yeah, and then I don't know. I don't know if Mr. I don't know, Randy, if you're asking that question or if you're asking a question about going back to staff to ask them about what portion the district should pay. Is that what you're asking, or are you asking about other companies out there? No, I just was wanting to uh, make sure that we are transparently talking with the staff to the extent they feel necessary. Uh, you know, I think we did town halls or however you held the meetings before. And I don't know if we've set a precedent of doing that, but I just want to make sure that those folks who may feel like we're not being competitive uh, would give us then the opportunity to clarify where we are. And I, I'm happy to go forward today. Don't get me wrong. I just want to make sure from a process standpoint that we are doing the best job we can and giving Natalie the support she needs to go back to the staff and faculty to address any issues that are potentially hanging out there and have them also ready for the 2024 25 uh, changes that may hit them in the pocketbook. Question. How come the single increase is more than the other categories? The single increase um, over the page. Oh, it's 15 two, and everybody else is around 14 six. Oh, because they had to adjust it enough to cover the cost of the increase for the single. Because I wasn't past, I wasn't increasing That's their premium at all. I had, to, I had to That's apply more portion. to the single. So that a single person wasn't paying any additional money. It's the, the far right indicates okay. the district. I'm trying to hold that single that single one hold, held harmless, so, so they're not going more. above $100. So we're, paying more. We're, okay. paying, we're paying a larger not, district contribution, not, not them. We're paying a larger okay. district contribution to keep the single select untouched as a, a not uh, as a single option under a hundred dollars a month. Oh, okay. so I, I thought that was employee contribution. No. Oh, I'm sorry. So that, that's that's the district contribution on that side. Okay. So the twenty yeah. percent, what we pay currently, what I'm proposing, we pay next year. Okay, so just thinking about what Randy was saying, I don't think that we need to go back to them because we clearly we're, they're not going to vote for having a thirty percent increase if they get above fifteen percent. But is there a way for you to? to honor what he's saying and say, make sure that we educate people as to what we've done this year and what we're going to do. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm good to go. Yeah. And I think last year too, Randy, part of it was because we really were looking at the different plan options. And so that was part of the impetus for that solicitation. And we were doing all those town hall meetings. And and yeah, because about... yeah. that was kind of a more of a fundamental change where here it's, Basically, what we're trying to navigate is a, just a straight across increase to premiums. And as a as a admin team, we're recommending the following to the board to say we're recommending you that the district pays the lion's share, but we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of that passed along. But the trade-off to that is that we'll uh, have a few more dollars we can put ideally towards raises. The other thing that's facing this is. Just trying to be again as aggressive as we can in light of the fact we were quite aggressive last year and just um you know competing against things that are beyond our control inflation economy and well I, and i honestly i mean that sounds a little defensive and i don't know that we need to be defensive about it i mean this is a really it's a solid benefits package costs are going up everywhere you guys have been really thoughtful in putting together a proposal to take on the bulk of the increase. And I think that's something that we can be proud of. 
And, you know, it just, it is what it is. If you can find it better elsewhere, go for it. Um, but we're doing the best we can. So a lot of hard work went into this and I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, that's, the, that's the message I want to make sure that we're delivering however you would expect to do that. So I, I'm good with going forward. I move the Board of Education adopt the recommended 2023-24 employee group health insurance renewal as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right, next item up for business, Board of Education Policy Review and Revision First Reading. So uh, we're going to actually, have, I'm going to ask Dr. Aldridge to kind of walk us through. There's a series of uh, policies here uh, now, uh, around instructional resources and teaching about controversial issues, concerns and complaints associated with such materials, et cetera. And really part of the impetus is that uh, we recognize that some of these policies, the procedures are a bit outdated and we wanna make sure that they uh, are uh, current and reflect how we would want to respond. Um, and it's uh, when, when there is not some type of formal complaint or challenge, uh, not going to would, but this is this is generally a good time to try to update policies when we're not in the midst of something. And we are not. We're thankful for that. But this this would be um, the right time to do that. And then I will just foreshadow there will be some new first reads at our next board regular board meeting in April, as Casby has a handful of policies that Liz and I are kind of working on, and I'll be working with cabinet members on right after spring break that we'll bring forward um, in April. So I'm going to invite Dr. Aldridge to kind of walk us through these. I can't wait. <laughs> no, no, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> you want to go back to the <laughs> yeah. So this all started in the fall when That was before school started, and the first policy that started with was I and B, which is on page 24. Um, and that one was put in place in 1979. And since I wasn't even in school yet, I thought, well, let's start here. So, as you are all well aware, um, with CASB policy, they will make references to another policy. And so, there was a lot with Liz, Liz's help cross-referencing what policies we had and what policies we didn't have and looking at what we did have and making sure that we were covered on, in both directions. And then taking out our complaint form and adding it into its own exhibit policy. So this is just a lot of cleanup from things that were quite a few years ago <laughs> that the book started. So, uh, on page 23, starting with IJ, uh, that's in concert with another po policy that we use when we adopt textbooks, which I use with teacher groups when they're going through the adoption process um, that I brought up to forward a couple times since I've been in this position. Is there a reason that that one does not say that while the board is in full control, we are also abiding by state law? Um, let's see here. It puts a lot of onus on the board for selecting the materials, but never mentions that materials are first and foremost meeting state law or something. Someone else could write that better than me, but um, that could be buried in on page 23, that first statute, but I can look into it specifically. It just could be worth putting front and center mm -hmm. that we don't get to create it from whole clock because we think it's fun. Yeah, and that may be part of that textbook adoption process because teachers have to first identify what 
as professionals they are looking for. Yep. And then we do a checks and balances through that process, but I can double check that. Wait, Another, but, I don't know that you would always have a state law. No, but if we did, then well, that's a good point. When, when applicable. So as of today, unless the bill gets passed, um, there, I'm thinking of the contents. Reading is statute bound. Um, comprehensive health is part of PE, so that is social studies. Math is not as of today. Um, and then anything other than those core subjects are not. So that's probably why you're, that's a good point that it's not in there. It just felt like it was putting a really big, like, these guys make all the decisions. And it's like, wait a minute. There's a lot that goes into that. So thank you. But I can cross reference that. So IJ is one that we did not have, but it accompanies the other policies that we do for adoptions. Um, I and B. Um, now we get into teaching about controversial issues, um, updates to more general pronouns, and then again, now we're into the next century for board policy, so that probably is timely. Um, KE, uh, public concerns and complaints, just have a couple edits and um, cross references with other policies, and that's where we kind of ran into some gaps that we felt that would be important for us to close. Like KEC on 26, this was not existent for us, but it's a CASB policy that we found valuable. Nothing different than really what we're doing, it's just fine tuning some language. KEC E is the actual form. Nothing has changed on that form. It's the same. It's just a standalone. Because before it was just keep scrolling. So it's a little bit easier to use by people who want to use it. KEF is also a policy that was not um, part of our board policy, but it's, it's a CASB policy. And it's about if you receive a complaint, what do you do with it? And how does that handle? It kind of formalizes and communicates what we're doing with those. Which means that on 31, we would eliminate KLB because we replace it with KEC. Same with KLB back R. Instead of having the form as part of the policy, we have our own um, method. KE is a just to clarify too, back on KE, public concerns and complaints. That's a general process for uh, a complaint or concern coming from parent or community member and this is really just adding some explicit language that if it is under these conditions it will route you this other direction we may have to we may end up visiting KE again because there's an, another piece that's around if it's a discrimination or harassment sex-based harassment sexual you know those that minor, yeah, that would route also. So we we may be revisiting Kate through a different lens down the road, but at this juncture, the reason for that piece is just to parlay out if that is your concern, we want to direct you to the process through KEC KEC like that process. So. Well, exciting! It's so the eleventh century. Yes. Well, that for that. Well. <laughs> Happy birthday to our board policy. And they, was there a digital copy or was it still in paper? Uh, it was on a tablet. Okay. Yeah, parchment paper probably. It was made in the basement of the school somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Just that sounds awesome. so true. So, any recommendations? Responsive to what Ms. was saying about IJ, at the end of the first paragraph. We could add the phrase in accordance with applicable state law. So all textbooks, material, materials, and other instructional resources and materials shall be available for inspection. No, the first paragraph. Oh, the first, first paragraph. paragraph. Sorry. Or said. whatever the, as you're pointing out, some of it's state statute or state law. And so state law might not be enough of it, but just that there is a state higher. Laws and regulations. Yeah, there is a higher guiding authority that we operate under. So with this policy, say that again. 
Um, so at the end of the first paragraph of IJ, mm -hmm. I would add, um, suggest that we add the language in accordance with applicable state laws, rules, and regulations. And you can look at it within context also. It's just, it, it, I don't know if anyone else had that feeling when they read it, but I would say I had a little for a moment. So it would read, since the board is a policy making body, it delegates to the district's professional personnel the authority for the selection of instructional and library materials in accordance with this policy, state statute, rule, state statutes, rules, and regulations, something like that. You can issue it out later. And, or, and in accordance with applicable state laws, rules, and regulations. Like yeah, and we'll it really doesn't it. make sense. It doesn't need to be in there. I'm okay no, with that. No, no, just, no, no, I think, think it clarifies that sometimes there are statutes that oh, were required supersede. that supersede the authority of the board. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's correct. I think that's a I think that's a good catch. So, so, and, uh, because there are limitations on the level control of instruction in the school system. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for that. I'm still amazed you went to school in 1979. Wait, what? That's Randy's been on for years, but he wasn't even. In reviewing, there's a third on here too uh, for the internet policy that we just need to pull back for this evening because it looks like the wrong. Edit uh, this is there. Which one? Um, the bottom part references the campus extending portal. Oh, which which policy is uh, uh, JS E. We don't have JS E yet. It's, it's JS and JS R. It says it's edited with JS E on the phone. That's what we think we were changing. Not in thing. our packet. No, but I, mean, I, can, I, can, I can clarify. I can it, yes. Um, yeah. Are we are are we finished with first read? Yeah. I'm going to do an motion on whatever we need to move on second. But I just no want to get on first reads. Right. No. I'm okay. I'm on to the third reads. Okay. Already on third reads. Yep. So J J uh, G C J professional staff. Time schedules, no changes from the inception. We're retiring that policy just to recap the language that's important to add. Uh, Natalie and Eric Pa and I will be adding and incorporating in contract language moving forward for next year. So um, after tonight, with your approval, that will be retired. JS, student use of internet and electronic communications. Nothing has changed since we last updated that. That has remained the same. And JSR, nothing has changed with that, uh, unless I'm missing something from, from Greg about that, other than we would be moving that to be a JSE, ultimately, once you would accept that approval, not a JSR. R is a regulation or a procedure. E stands for an exhibit or a form. And the acceptable language. use agreement really is a form. It is not a procedure. And Greg is saying that there's actually a yeah. There's just yeah. It's it, it's the last line just needs to be edited. It, we do not have a on campus extended portal to go to. So oh, not, okay. So that, can that, we approve it with that amendment? For the that last line just needs to be amended to have them. Uh, contact their building secretary of the notification, not do this electronic portal that you so. If we can, if we can approve it as amended, then I'm happy to go ahead and move can, can, you, can you read, state that just for the record, what would change? Sure. So what would change is that last sentence that would say, uh, may choose to restrict access at any time. By law, instead of by logging on, by notifying the secretary at their students or their child's um, giving school. 
Is that document need to have signature lines if it's really an agreement? Is uh, so that's that's the part that we um, things ago. They would be opt. It's an opt-in policy that gives them the option to opt out, and that's the only part that needs to be adjusted. Is that last line about how they would opt out? So, no, it's a so no because it's a default. Of okay, so it's something part of the registration of something that they're already clicking through electronically? Correct. The line that we're changing to opt out. Okay. Greg, I have that reading. Parents, guardians, or legal custodians may choose to restrict access at any time by notifying the school administrative assistant and updating the internet access option to limited access. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so by uh, notifying the... Is you to put the child school or the student school? Administrative, just so they have a place they go to school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a place school find. Mm -hmm. I need to find their child's school administrative assistant. Updating the internet access option to limited access. Correct. One more time for the board. Parents, guardians, or legal custodians may choose to restrict access at any time by notifying their child's school administrative assistant and updating the internet access option to limited access. I'm ready. All right, I move the Board of Education adopt revisions to policy JS, student use of the internet and electronic communications, and procedure JSR, student use of internet and electronic communications, as amended tonight, which is the acceptable use agreement, and permanently remove GCJ professional staff time schedules upon third readings. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's just to recap on those policies. So, let's we'll first, we'll come to you in a second. So, we'll have a little bit of a slight language change back on the statute for the state law reference on IPA. And there'll be a new bundle of first streets from some of the Cassidy's work. So, we will have some additional policies in April. Is that announced already? Right. I, I think so. <laughs> All right, setting announced and dates and changes we need to be aware of. I think you've received the latest and greatest from Liz, worked with building principals, and I worked with Natalie, and we've also communicated with Dave Strelo, and our plans are that Natalie and Dave and I will join those of you who desire to attend for any of the said meetings. We tried to capture most of those kind of in the mid morning time slot. Uh, and I think, according to the email that I sent all of you, we anticipate an hour ish for elementary and preschool, 90 minutes ish for the junior high, and then probably a couple hours at the high school. Where you're walking shoes. Where you're walking shoes. I've asked Natalie to really lead in the communications, but I'll tag along. And again, we're going to ask uh, Dave Shaler to be with as well. The principals uh, just shared with them they don't need to change anything with their schedule with their students and their staff. School is just running as normal, and they even know that if they have other obligations, they can be doing other obligations. But we just ask that they selected days uh, where they would be at least in the building. Far sickness, illness, so they could be available if we needed to catch them for a few minutes at either the beginning or the end. Some of the principals may choose to want to just walk with us, but they know they have that flexibility. And if there's anything specific that you are wanting to have, 
um, on that day, um, or or as you think about things that you're hopeful to be able to see, um, please let Natalie and I know. Um, otherwise, we'll put our heads together and put together some things that we think would be meaningful, kind of bigger ticket items and maybe some things that have been more recently improved. And here's things that we're still working on in the building. These are some of the priorities. Show off some of the improvements, obviously. Also, cat tunnels, please. Cat, cat tunnels, catwalks, um, and the drama. So, spider three it. zones would be fine with me. Exactly. And then the additional piece, I think we added in here, but I'm not sure. Number 42, we added the academic. List. Yeah. Academic awards night was added for Monday evening, May 15, 2023. And then lastly, per our conversation, we have backed off the June work session. And at this juncture, we would utilize May work session as a, as a, an option to uh, just delve a little bit deeper with some culminating information, back survey, your visits, you know, summary data from feedback from staff, and just what are we seeing as some of the priorities in the coming year, and then a gift of time in June uh, for that. So I think that's about it, unless you guys all have any questions on calendar stuff coming up. Okay. All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody.